Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us today in sharing Thanksgiving traditions and stories from around the world. My name is Donna Almarashi, and I head the Department of Cultural Diplomacy at the Embassy of the United Arab Emirates in Washington, DC. Throughout my time working in cultural diplomacy, I found that hosting a lunch or dinner is much more than eating a meal together. Food seems to always contain wonderful stories as one of its main ingredients and a power of its own to break down barriers, build bridges of cultural understanding and share our common values. Thanksgiving is an opportunity for all of us to take stock and even through difficult times, be thankful for positive achievements and more importantly, show our appreciation for family and friends. Due to these unusual times that we are all going through, I had felt frustrated early on to not be able to host culinary and other events. But I quickly found that through webinars like these, we're able to share our culture and our traditions while forming new friendships near and far even more widely. So today I am truly thankful to be joined by so many old and new friends from around the world like Chef Sahar al Awadi in the UAE and Chef Art Smith in the US, who have been so generous to offer their time to share with us their holiday traditions and a couple of dishes they've included at their table, which I'm sure we'll all be encouraged to try ourselves. I'm also thankful for the opportunity to work with our new friend, Lauren Bernstein, founder and CEO of the Culinary Diplomacy Project, a nonprofit organization that focuses on promoting mutual understanding among people of different cultures through the power of global culinary exchange, who will help keep today's conversation even more exciting. Thank you again, everyone, for joining us today. Please follow at UAE Culture in USA to stay updated on more events like this. I'll turn it over to Lauren to introduce the chefs and get us going. Enjoy and happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thank you, Donna, and thank you so much to the Embassy of the UAE for hosting us today. We're very excited to be here. Uh, good morning uh, to those of us in the US and good evening uh, to our friends in the Middle East. We are so happy you could join us today. Um, as Donna told you, this is uh, American Thanksgiving this week. Um, it's a holiday that we celebrate here in the US where we gather around the table with friends and family and we give thanks uh, for uh, the, the things that we have, um, the good things that we have in our lives and we enjoy an amazing meal uh, across the country. Um, unfortunately, this year, uh, as, as we just talked about, um, we're not able to gather uh, the way that we normally have in the past with our friends and family. And so at the Culinary Diplomacy Project, we think it can still be a very fun holiday uh, by switching it up a little bit and adding some new traditions to your table this year. Um, we uh, would encourage you to either incorporate a dish from a different region in the US, um, like uh, Southern cornbread stuffing uh, that Chef Art is gonna be uh, teaching us momentarily, or take a dish from an entirely different culture, uh, like Chef Sahar is going to be teaching us a pumpkin acida uh, that is an Emirati dish. Let this be uh, a year where uh, we have a little fun with our meals and we try something new. Um, and continue connecting with each other. Um, as, as Donna said, you know, the silver lining to uh, being separated is that we actually can remain connected virtually and we can reach even farther uh, all the way uh, to the Middle East today. So um, I have the pleasure of introducing um, these two amazing chefs you see in front of you. Um, Chef Sahar Alawadi uh, is uh, joining us from uh, the, the amazing hotel uh, Burj Al Arab in uh, the UAE. Uh, she, is, uh, she began there uh, in 2016 as a junior pastry chef, and she was promoted to pastry chef in 2019, becoming the first and only female pastry chef in the region, which is absolutely fantastic. Chef Sahar uh, first worked at their bistro and boulangerie in 2014, where her talent was quickly recognized uh, by her head chef who sent her to Paris to perfect the art of bread making from his own mentor. Uh, upon completion of the internship, uh, Sahar returned to La Serre for another year before joining the team at Burj Al Arab in 2016. So welcome, uh, Chef Sahar, we're so excited to have you. 
Um, we also are joined today by Chef Art Smith, who is the executive chef and co-owner of Blue Door Kitchen and Garden, um, and also Reunion in Chicago, as well as Homecoming Florida Kitchen at Disney Springs in Walt Disney World. Um, uh, Art was the personal chef to Oprah Winfrey for 10 years uh, and now coordinates and cooks for special events all around the world. He has been on television. You may recognize him from Top Chef Masters, uh, Top Chef Duels, Iron Chef, Today Show, Good Morning America, um, and uh, uh, many other shows. So we are grateful to have you here today. I know uh, we've got you in your home kitchen in Jasper, Florida. Uh, exactly. So thank you for joining us. Um, for all of our guests who are cooking along, we encourage you to cook with us, uh, but this video will also be on uh, the UAE uh, Embassy YouTube channel if you want to tune in later uh, to, to catch up and watch it um, and cook along then. Uh, but Art, why don't you kick it off for us and uh, teach us how to make some cornbread stuffing. Hi everyone, I'm Chef Art Smith and I'm right here from Jasper, Florida, North Florida, which is the southern one of the most southernmost regions of North America. Well, it's a pleasure. You know, Thanksgiving, regardless of how it all came to be, what's most important is the symbolicness of Thanksgiving, and that's the sharing of food around the table with all those you love. You know, here in the States, we love it. And in fact, you know, they celebrate Thanksgiving in other countries like Brazil, and, and you wouldn't believe, but the whole idea is that wherever you are in the world, we're all thankful for food and we're all thankful for sharing it. And, you know, food always tastes better when shared with the people that you love. Um, what I'm going to do is show you a dish. It's very, very simple. We're first going to start out with cornbread. Now, for those of you, cornmeal, you can get at the store or you can order online. But thank goodness for, you know, what you can order. And you take a cup of cornmeal and a cup of all-purpose flour and a tablespoon of baking powder with some salt and you mix it together. And you want to put that in a bowl, okay? Simple as that. The next thing you want to do is I'm going to add one egg. That's one whole egg. And now I'm going to add about a half a cup of buttermilk. Now buttermilk, if you don't have buttermilk, you can use yogurt. You can use uh, labna. You can just remember, you can use either one of those. Now, and you just want to mix those two together. See that? That's how I'm mixing it together. Very simple, also known as a quick bread. Very, very simple. And then what I have here is we call this a cast iron skillet. Cast iron skillets are great because they retain the heat. And historically in the South, it's a traditional vessel that we cook with. Yes, Lauren. Is, is cornbread typically eaten in the south is it a regional dish Tell no us about it's, it's it's it, cornbread is a traditionally um the reason why we have a lot of cornbread in the south because we didn't have wheat we didn't grow wheat and so corn we grew corn and uh, and that's why we have cornbread and so wherever the region you are like when you, in italy you know when you're up in um, parts of where in italy where polenta is bigger and 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 uh, and same thing with rice and and like in the South, it's pasta. You know, it's the same same exact thing, okay? Depending on the region and what they grow, um, they do that. So I wanna just take that and add that, yes. Yes, and we will be um, we will be sharing written recipes. We will post them on Instagram. Um, I just saw that question. And everyone, please feel free to ask questions as we move along. If you have questions for the chefs, um, we're happy to answer um, any questions right. you have. But yes, we will be yeah. posting um, recipes. And you can preheat your oven too and preheat the pan. So all you do is put it in a 400 degree oven. Okay, perfect. Okay, after you do that, you bake it for about 25 minutes. And after you bake it, guess what you get? <laughs> See that? Beautiful. And what's great, I did these, I did one recipe in two layers. Why? Because you want the crust, okay? Let's put this board back over here. Simple, let's put this pan over here. And no, we're gonna go to town here. What's what's great about this very, very simple recipe is it's like a, it's very much like a um, like a like a saute. That's all we're doing. I'm gonna first start with some turkey sausage, okay? Chef Art, do you have to grease the skillet before you make the cornbread? Yes, you can grease the skillet too. I have I the, the thing is in the south, we we um, 
we what we do is we we use our skillet so much that they develop a patina that does not um, that does that does not need as much oil. You understand by that? Yes. We call it seasoned. So you don't typically wash a cast iron skillet with soap, right? No, 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 no. Don't do that. So I'm going to just take this and I'm going to start just start sauteing this. Well, you know. Uh, this is a recipe that became very popular from um, cooking it for my boss, Oprah Winfrey. She had a special party, uh, a, a dinner to be, to, uh, uh, to be remembered. And it was, um, she was giving thanks to all the people in her life who had done so much for her. And this was a special meal that we made. So I'm gonna get this going here. Now, what I've done is I put together what makes a great stuffing. Now, you know, depending on where you are, stuffing, uh, we call it dressing. You know, historically, since, since the days of, you know, Arthur, and, you know, it just historically all over the world, the English have always stuffed birds and chickens and fish and things. And, you know, someone would say, well, we invented, well, the French have done it. Um, you know, yesterday I, I made dolmas and, you know, and, and, and I made the tradi traditional dolma with the meat and rice and, and I stuffed onions with it. And um, uh, I, 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 love, I love the Middle East and I've been there several times with the program. Um, you know, our last adventure was in Jordan where we ate the most amazing food, didn't we, Lauren? Yes. And, and, um, and so, but anyway, back to our dressing here, we're gonna sit here and we're going to saute our, our turkey, okay? Chef turkey Star, sausage. Um, yeah. Chef Star, have you ever made uh, cornbread over in, in the UAE? Uh, I have made cornbread. I actually love cornbread, just like on its own with a little uh, butter. I love that. Because you get the yeah, sweet, a little bit of salty, yep. and the butter is just great with it. And do you put sugar in yours? A little bit. Mm -hmm. So, so, so you studied in Paris. Where'd you study in Paris? So it was it's it's a little bakery uh, in Paris in the 11th uh, district. That's mm -hmm. where my chef learned um, from his mentor. And so we were working there, um, and we started at like 3 a.m. in the morning to start all the bread to make sure everything was ready at 6 a.m. And then he, we just run through all the way to 9 p.m. And that's like every single day of the week, it's the same process. And in the morning we make bread for breakfast and then we start the bread for lunch and then we start the bread for dinner. So he makes fresh bread um, for right. every single day. It's amazing. Well, I love, I, I love baking. I love the bakery, but you know what? You don't sleep, <laughs> do you? And, I mean, uh, yeah, he he never slept and he never went anywhere. He basically just lived in the bakery all the time. <laughs> right. it, I mean, it's it's truly when you think about what people give up to be bakers. Um, did you ever have an opportunity to meet Apollonia Poilon when you're in Paris? To be Poilon, yeah, Poilon Bakery in Saint Germain. I did not. Yeah, she's wonderful, and she gave me a tour of her bakery and. Um, and there, you know, Paris is probably one of the most incredible places in the world to learn about baking and pastry and chocolate. And, you know, uh, I love Pierre Hame. He's probably one of the most interesting, amazing, you know, what, you know, every time you, we put a, uh, you know, a macaroon in your mouth and, and it, with a different flavor, you have him to thank for because he is the one when he was at La Deray, started out with yeah. all those different flavors, right? Uh, do you have to make a lot of macaroons here? Uh, we do make a lot of macaroons. Funny story. So Pierre Hermé, like you said, is like the godfather of pastry. And right. my pastry, when I started here at British Arab, was Pierre Hermé's um, secondhand chef. And they opened all of Pierre Hermé's stores together. So I got to learn all of that stuff uh, from him. It was amazing. Their flavor combinations, the textures, they really put a lot of thought into everything. Right. Did you ever hear of a, of, of a pastry chef? He, he's no longer alive. His name was Lenault. 
Then also, of course, he was. Yeah, he was I, lo I loved him. <laughs> I met sure. him years and years ago. Were and, you? Um, oh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to ask um, Chef Sahar, it, when you learned your French, when you went and had that experience in France and you came back to the UAE, you had learned French technique, but were you also able to incorporate some of the French flavors and techniques into traditional Middle Eastern dishes? Uh, so for the first couple of years, what I really focused on uh, when I got into um, the F&B industry or into the culinary world was to kind of just understand all of the basic techniques, uh, whether it was French or, or Italian or wherever it was from. So the, the initial thing that I wanted to learn was the basic technique. And then from that, grow into incorporating different flavors into it. So um, for me, I think they have sort of figured out most of the techniques. There's still things to like grow from. Um, I prefer to add flavors into more traditional techniques to sort of present flavors that are nostalgic to me or, or that are um, kind of synonymous with the UAE culture or the Arab culture and kind of elevate that into a modern technique. I'm sure that's popular. I'm sure people enjoy that. <laughs> um, so, so, Chef Art, what do you have in that frying pan right now? You right, have so what I did was we've added some onion and we've, we're going to add two chopped onions and we're going to saute those until soft, which you're doing now. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add about three stalks of celery. Okay. And what this is, celery is like the Celery and onions and garlic is like the base of delicious cooking. It's the foundation. Um, it's the, you know, and, and it's something that we call the Holy Trinity. And if you're in France, say, you know, they would, they would have a, you know, darling, help me here. I'm missing for words, Sahar. They would, they, it's, it's, the, it's the, the base, you know, the, you know, the, um, yes, exactly. And, um, <laughs> And so anyway, that gives the flavor and we're going to just sit there saute. So because this, this is basically the significance of the dish, you know, um, I mean, I think that what's interesting and I'm adding a little Himalayan pink salt to it just a little bit. And I think what the significant of the dish is, is that uh, it's it's when we think of Thanksgiving, not only the sharing of food, but the comfort of it, you know, Thanksgiving is more about it's it, the holiday is about the feelings that it gives us. It's that feeling of knowing that, you know, that there are people in our lives that who love us and we share these meals together on this very special day. You know, um, you don't have to have stuffing on Thanksgiving, but um, it's a food that somehow or another has always become symbolicness of it. Um, you don't have to have turkey, you can have chicken. Um, I was reading about an American an Arabic family and they have leg of lamb and which for theirs, which I thought was lovely. Um, and then what I wanna do now is to give a little sweetness, I'm gonna add some apple. Now you could add raisins if you wanted to. This is two apples chopped, okay? Actually, the, I like the fact that you added the apples there. I think like the texture and the sweetness really brings out the rest of the flavors, right? Right, exactly. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of so sage. This is just fresh sage that I've um, that I'm just gonna pull right off of, of the stalk here, of the little thing. So it's really nice, a nice sage. And um, and I also have some. Um, I also have some. Uh, that's thyme. I have some, and I'm just the sage that I'm just tearing apart my fingers, which I think has better flavor than chopped up. The sage has happens has such a really extremely um, uh, harsh flavor that I don't like to um, put too much in there. Why, why did you it, say that you prefer to use your fingers versus chopping it? What's the difference? The, the chopping does, it just, it makes it, it makes it, I always find it, it's just like, it's like using a food processor. It always makes everything watery. When you chop it, it doesn't have the same flavor or texture. It's just, it's, it's just like tearing basil where you're putting it on, uh, a basil salad or putting in pasta, it tastes different. I don't know, Lauren, all I can tell you, it tastes different. And, um, 
and it just it, it, maybe it's just the act of it. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my cornbread now. It's this simple. You just break it like this. You see how I'm doing it? See? Yeah. I'm just yep. breaking big pieces. Why? Because it tastes better with big pieces than you make it too mealy. And that's it. Now we can also, and I, 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 I have about this is a this is just one little recipe. This this serves about ten to twelve people. Okay, so we have a lot of stuff in here. Okay, and um, but the best part, of course, is the crust. So just you could just take the crust right off. It's really nice. Okay, and then I'm gonna add a little bit of, of my crumbs. These are these are some bread crumbs that I that I've added in. Okay. When you say bread crumbs, are those like cornbread bread crumbs? Ye, these these are white white bread crumbs. Okay. Oh, white. Okay, they're they're white bread, dear. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is is that I'm gonna take this and just toss it carefully, all right? And and what I can do now is I can add a little chicken broth. Okay. See this? Yep. Just a little chicken broth. All right. And and that's it. Can you believe that? It's that simple. And the reason why people like mine over others is because I do not like it over mixed. And when you over mix, it just doesn't have the texture and stuff. So all I do now, I take another skillet, a bigger skillet, and I just take it and I just carefully put it in my skillet. So do you have to um, do you have to do anything to the skillet first again, or is it just sort of? Oh, you can you can um, you can you can you can um, honey, you can you can um, you can oil it a little bit, but there's plenty of oil in the in this that you don't have to do that to it. Okay, all right. And then I just take that, and then what I want to do is I'm going to bake it till it has like a crust on top. It'll get nice and crunchy. Okay. How long do you have to bake it? Uh, I bake it for about. 45 minutes. You don't even have to bake it that long if you don't want to. Okay. Put it in a put it in a 350 degree oven. And there, there you have it. Okay. Uh, well, one of the things that I love about Thanksgiving um, in the US, and, and when I've traveled overseas, a lot of people have asked me about Thanksgiving because it's um, it's a holiday that we have here in the US that is not a religious holiday. It's it's a, a national meal that we share. But what's so interesting, I think, about our Thanksgiving is that it differs depending on where you are in this country, right? So though we all have the main staples, generally, we, people usually have stuffing, they usually have poultry of some kind, um, some potato, but it differs depending on where you are. And I think what people don't realize abroad is that the U.S. is a very regional country and that depending on where you live, the food is a little bit different. Um, so Chef Art, if I were um, in New England, like what would my Thanksgiving, what would my stuffing maybe look like? Oysters. Oysters. They put, they put oysters in the dressing. Very typical to put seafood. Wow. So what kind of like around the U.S., how would you see sort of the different regional stuffings in the South? We just made a cornbread stuffing because cornbread is really prominent in the um, South. I mean, I think a lot in most of uh, most of America, they use they use a white bread stuffing. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I think that cornbread is is particularly I think if you were in parts of New Mexico, they would take tortillas and and and, and toast them and add to, to stuffing. Um, and I think they would also add chili. Um, you know, you in in um, in if you were in um, in in Texas for for Tex-Mex, you would you would have um, you would have you would have some kind of uh, uh, spice in in it, which we don't do. Uh, New Orleans, they put uh, they put spicy sausage and and, and tasso ham in theirs. Um, uh, it's it, it's all different, but mainly on the coastal regions that you find seafood in the dish. Interesting, I didn't know that. Chef Art, yeah. what's your favorite, uh, favorite dish in Thanksgiving, at Thanksgiving? I think my favorite is the stuffing and cranberries. I love cranberries. You know, cranberries are a great North American treat that um, 
that grew wild here, they found, and, um, and they became very popular, excuse me. And, uh, and I, I, um, I, I love it. I think that's my favorite. I love the tart, the, the savory, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I don't think Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving pies are my, are, are my all time favorite, you know what I mean? And yeah. um, never have been. You know, I, I, I don't, I'm not real big on it. I'm not, and I'm not hugely big on sweet potato either, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Blasphemous. <laughs> yeah. No, but I love, I love, um, I love, you know, my mother used to make incredible things with cranberry and I always remind me of her when, when I had that. Yeah. Yeah. Is there, am I mistaken? Is there a whole thing around these canned cranberry sauces in the States? Is that like a, like a cultural thing, cult culture or something? Well, I, you know, cran, cran, canned cranberry relish, um, as they call it, um, I think it's just something like, you know, it was something that came out of the 40s and 50s and when canned goods were considered very, very, you know, popular. Um, yeah. I think now they're kind of campy, you know what I mean? And, and I think, but for many, it's very much part of, you know, this is part of life. And um, personally, <laughs> a little, a little sugar, a little sugar and with cranberries, very carefully cooked slowly. This tastes better than the can, I think. For sure. I will say though, for, for many, including myself, for some reason, it's, there's something about the canned, <laughs> You have your lines from the can that show you where to cut the jelly. <laughs> it's uh, it's a definitely a tradition um, for well, a lot of it, people. Yeah, I mean there are people that swear by it; they love it. But it's it's I love I love the other more um, anyway. Um, our, I have a couple of questions from viewers yeah. about stuffing really quickly. Um, one person asked, "Can you put uh, little bits of butter on top to make it crispy and brown, or do you not need to do that?" You can do that. Remember, there's some. Uh, of the poultry fat in the turkey that you say so you don't need to, but you can add a little butter. You can butter it lightly with just a little bit of butter on top, which is really nice. I've done that too. That works. Um, the, the biggest thing is you don't want it to become too oily. And, um, and so I tend to be a little bit more delicate about that. Do you, do you generally put stuff your, uh, do you usually put your dressing? Uh, so there's a distinction, right? So um, for those of you who are watching, um, stuffing uh, means that you've stuffed it into the turkey. And if you're not stuffing it into the turkey, you call it dressing. Um, so Art um, it has been referring to the dressing because right. he is cooking his in the oven. Um, Art, do you typically uh, stuff that stuffing that you just made into the turkey or do you do both? Um we have done that in the past. I'm more likely to stuff vegetables into the turkey cavity, which gives more flavor. Um, what happens is the oil from the turkey, um, it's, the stuffing becomes like a sponge and the what's inside is usually way too oily to eat. And that's why I do that. I would rather get the aromatics of the vegetables in the turkey than this very oily stuffing. Okay, great. Um, do you have any like Thanksgiving memories that you remember as a child, just that sort of stand out in your mind? Any special meals or family gatherings? Well, you know, we what we do have a season here in Northern Florida where the season changes. And my favorite part of the holidays, um, particularly Thanksgiving, was my grandfather was quite, uh, he loved to go bird hunting and um, on Thanksgiving day. So we would have turkey and we would have the dressing and stuff, but we'd also have some kind of game. And I remember, um, it, as it may sound a little morbid, but I remember putting my hands in his pockets and I could feel the warm quail in his pockets and the smell of cigars, you know what I mean? It was just, uh, he, 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 would just, he would just go out and, you know, and, and bring those and my grandmother would make those. and. Um, which was really tradition. And smell. The, the, the fondest memories, of course, are, the, are the, the aromas of the food, the roasting of the turkey and the, the, the dressing. And, um, and then, you know, we were, we, 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 we loved, you know, all sitting around, you know, to, to, the, to this day now, I sit, I sat at that table, we all sat at, and I keep thinking, we must have been really small people because I don't know how we all got around that table. It was a small <laughs> table. And, um, but it, but it was, uh, it was, it was a wonderful time. Um, 
uh, it, where I'm from, um, the, you know, uh, a Sunday is a day that all the family would get together and spend time together and kind of just kind of recharge and see each other. And then Monday through Saturday, everyone was working. Well, why don't we uh, turn over to you now, Chef Sahar, uh, to teach us pumpkin acida, which is an Emirati dessert. Mm. Um, See everything? Uh, is everything angled well? Um, I think, uh, yeah, I, I th if you just, um, rather than fuss with it, I think if you can just like, when you're cooking, hold things up a little bit so we can see them. Um, sure. But first, I want to ask you, um, have you ever had a, an American Thanksgiving? Have you ever been to the U.S. for Thanksgiving or had a, a Thanksgiving meal where you are in the UAE? Uh, I haven't had a Thanksgiving in the U.S., but a couple of years ago, um, we had a couple of friends that were feeling really homesick. Um, and so we decided that we were going to do a Thanksgiving dinner because they were going to miss Thanksgiving with their families. And we did that one year. We named the bird. Her name was, uh, I think it was Beatrice. Uh, Beatrice. <laughs> and I made a pumpkin pie and we did this whole feast and somehow that turned into an annual tradition. And it kind of happened every year. And this is actually the first, uh, no, sorry, this is the second year that I haven't been able to, get, to attend um, just because I've been working. But it, it kind of started as a one-time thing and turned into an annual tradition. And then we, we just did it every year. That's great. It's, it, it really is. Um, it, the, the themes of Thanksgiving are essentially gratitude and, um, you know, giving. Um, and I think that's universal. You know, it's sharing right. with people that we love, giving back to our communities. Community service is a big part of Thanksgiving here as well. And, and just sharing with people who have, who don't have enough maybe, um, or, um, you know, bringing people into your, your family who don't have somewhere else to go. Um, so I think that's really nice. And I think we encourage people all around the world to celebrate with us because it is something that should be celebrated everywhere. Right. There's nothing like food to bring everybody together. Absolutely. When I, um, one of my, what, what I did Thanksgiving in South Africa for the girls for Oprah. And, you know, in this time of year, it's, it's summer for you, correct now? Uh, no, for, for just about, uh -huh. it's, it's fall, but we're just about starting winter. Oh, winter! Really, 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 really. Well, it's it's yeah. summer in it's summer in South Africa, and um, you know we we they they love a barbecue, and so we did a Thanksgiving barbecue, which was really kind of cool. Oh, that's you know, awesome! So, yeah, yeah. You never fried a turkey, a whole turkey fried. You know, I've <laughs> never done that because I find it a little dangerous. But you know, but I I, I think if you did it in I would only do it in a restaurant with the ventilation and with everything and all that. But I know I know people that do it. But I think yeah, don't try this at home. Do not try this at home. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I, I'm I'm more to the traditional one. Yeah. I agree. Uh, okay, it Chef. Let's, let's learn how to make pumpkin acida. Chef, you're, yeah. you're going to follow along, right? Right. Exactly. So, um, do you have your pumpkin puree? Uh, yeah, what I did was, tell, tell me if I was okay. You know, I find pumpkins horribly hard to peel, okay? Okay. And so what I, what I did was I roasted my pumpkin, okay? And I'm scooping it out of the shell. Is that okay? Perfect. That's exactly what I did. Oh, okay. We think a lot, okay. So and basically, I, had, I yeah. bought these pumpkins. I cut them in half, I took the seeds out, and then you put them face down on a tray and you bake them at 350 for about 30 to 45 minutes. And you yep. get this like soft caramelized pumpkin. Yep, that's what I did, that's what I did. And then just like Chef Art's doing, just scoop out the flesh and you get some really nice pumpkin flesh. Can you use uh, someone? Someone's asking if they can use canned pumpkin. Would that you work? Can. Yeah, you can. Yeah. I think you need to add a little bit of water because I think it's a little drier than if you did this. So just add a tiny bit of water to, to make sure that the consistency is a little bit more um, right. loose. 
Right. Yeah. And I, yeah, because I think once you start, you start cooking it down and, um, and, and, you know, and, but, and also when you add the, 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 the brown flour. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm all in the pot now, dear. All in the pot. I'm going in the pot. I'm going in. So you just need to warm that while you're warming that. Um, I'm in there. Uh, I wanted to show you guys the toasted flour. So this yeah. is the top toasted flour. And you'll see the color difference sort of. Uh-huh. Just like toast it to get the rawness out of it and it'll give it a little nice flavor as well. So Perfect. while your pumpkin is warming up, uh, you can do that in the oven or even in a pan. Uh, super easy. Uh, I have a little bit of rose water, Art. Yeah. Uh, and I'm taking like a pinch of saffron and just like with your fingers, rub them together so that you break down the, um, the little strands. Yes, and drop, I'm doing that. Drop it in the rose water so that you can get the extraction from the saffron. Okay, did that. Okay. Chef Star, um, is it possible to use other squashes or is it just the pumpkin? Like, are there other squashes that would work for this recipe? You probably could. Um, this is a winter recipe. So in the UAE, we do this um, because we, you get pumpkins in the winter. Um, during the rest of the year, we do it with carrots. Um, so root vegetables that are a little hearty, they work the best. So do we... Do, when do we add the cardamom? Um, in a bit. So if your pumpkin is a little bit warm, we can start adding the rest of the ingredients. So I'm adding the sugar now. Okay. And you said uh, dimmer sugar, right? Yeah. You can use uh, caster sugar or white sugar. I just like demerara sugar. It's all the, you know, with your preference. Um, add the sugar, add the flour. And you um, saved your in, did you? Sorry? You, 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 you sifted yours in, right? Yes. Um, why, and then, why, do you, why do you sift flour? Uh, when you, you toast it, it kind of clumps together. So you need to sift it out to get the, to, to get the lumps out and to make it a little bit airy. How long do you have to toast the flour for? Um, you just need it to be like a light brown, not too dark, just to get the rawness out uh, of the flour. Um, and then I'm adding the rose water, and that depends on you, the rose water with the saffron, how much rose you like, you like it rosier or less rosy, uh, whatever you like. And then we're adding the cardamom. So I have two cardamom pots. I'm just gonna break it a little bit, just like that with my hand. I like to do things, to break things with my hands too. Yeah, tastes better. Tastes better, it's, it's the seasoning in the hand. Yeah, I think what it is, is I think chef, um, you know, the great pastry chefs comes from touch. Yeah. The feel, and I also feel that, um, we we love handmade food and food that's done by hand. Yeah, per, we personally feel tastes better. I agree. Because we're we're loving it. <laughs> like wearing uh, gloves. Are you the same, Art? Pardon? I don't like wearing gloves. No, when I'm I don't. I don't because you can't feel it. Exactly. And so COVID's been very. Uh, <laughs> very difficult with that. So yeah, it's very difficult. Let me show you real quick. Just continue cooking it on not so high heat. Um, make sure everything is cooked through and you're getting the flavors out. Um, it doesn't take long. Once it starts to thicken pretty nicely um, and it won't stick to your, to your pan, uh, you should be done. It really just takes between five and 10 minutes. Okay, perfect. Because your pumpkin's already cooked, so you just want everything okay. to together. When can, I cure, 
Can I puree it now? Yeah. Okay, perfect. You can either puree it now, you could puree it uh, before as well if you want. It, it's really such an easy recipe that it's not very finicky at all. Um, Chef Sahar, how many um, servings does this recipe make? Um, at the hotel, we serve this and we make small portions. So they're like individual portions and that makes about 15 to 20. Um, for bigger portions, you should be able to make about eight. Okay, so, so Art, you just pureed with a hand blender. Chef Sahar, do you, are, do, is that part of your process or do you not? before but like I said you can puree before or after your your pumpkin it really does make a difference you'll I you'll get so. this the only difference is art might have to cook it for another minute but that's it okay right yeah I actually have some I made ahead of time too and okay, um yeah, I just, I just, you, she's right. It'll, it'll take a little, little bit longer. Yeah. Chef yeah. Sahar, this looks nice and thick. It does it have a yeah. nice thick texture. Okay. You see, it's really like a pumpkin pudding. Um, I would say. Uh, kind of like what you would get if you made a pumpkin pie, just without the crust. And no. Yeah. Egg. Yeah. Um, and that's it. That's done. Can we? Art, how... Do you put little raisins on yours too? So I put pistachios, but you could put raisins. That would be great. Yeah, I, I have I pistachios also. So here's how I plated mine. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Um, for everybody else watching, I kind of just take a spoon and put it in your plate. Uh huh. And take another one and do that. And wow. then use the back of your spoon to just go around. That's why you're a pastry chef. It's just you do that <laughs> like hummus. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> exactly. And then just yeah. sprinkle. Some pistachio in there. Uh huh. Uh, put some big pieces of pistachio in there. Uh, there we go. And then some rose petals. Easy peasy. Wow. Beautiful. You're a pastry so, chef. <laughs> beautiful. Yes. So, what would you would you serve bread with this, or do you? How do you eat it? Uh, just on its own, really. Just like you would eat like a chocolate pudding or a butterscotch pudding, just a pumpkin pudding. So this is a I dessert. Like nuts. Yeah, it's a dessert. Gorgeous. I love it with tons of nuts. Yeah. Chef, is there a certain time of year? I mean, I, I understand pumpkin is in the winter, but is there like a, a holiday that you tend to eat this dish or is this just, you know, uh, during the holiday? Oh, yeah. they would Probably make it for um, celebrations. So if there was a wedding, you'd probably see it um, at weddings. Um, if you were, you know, when the weather gets really great, everybody kind of drives out to the desert and pitches a fire and just, you know, takes a lot of food with them and, and hangs out there. So that, that would be great when it's cold to have something like a pumpkin to, to keep you warm. Yeah. Do you that do you serve when you serve this dish? Do you serve it warm or do you cold uh, room temperature? What? How do you serve it? Room temperature. Room temperature. Does it have Again, to sit? Have it warm. If you like, if you like that. But traditionally, it's served room temperature. So if someone were to make this, would they, um, could you refrigerate it uh, before your guests come and then take it out and let it sit just to come to room temperature? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. 
absolutely. I believe if I'm not, I think it would work if you could probably even make an ice cream out of this. If you have a custard base, um, you could add some of this athleta to it. Uh, mix it all together and then turn it all together. I think it would make a really great ice cream. I bet it would be delicious. Yeah. Um, you um, you guys actually have uh, the World Expo coming up in Dubai uh, next fall, right? Correct. Um, for those of you who are listening who don't know what the World Expo is, it's actually the World's Fair. Uh, if you need an excuse to go to Dubai, uh, this is a great excuse to go. Um, the World Expo is um, every country in the world essentially comes and sets up a pavilion and showcases yeah. the culture and food, of course, always plays prominently. Um, and yeah. when you said ice cream, you made me think of it because a, a little known fact is uh, the ice cream cone was actually created at a World's Fair uh, in okay. 1904. It was the St. Louis World's Fair. Right. Um, and so and so was iced tea, honey. Yes, iced tea too. It's amazing. These World's Fairs, they should still call them World's Fair, but they're called World Expo. Yeah. So what? Chicago, the brownie in Chicago. People are really? very, yes. When you have to when you have to make these things work in that setting, um, apparently the gentleman ran out of cups for his ice cream and the vendor next to him was making waffles. And so he rolled up the waffle, put his ice cream on it and it was a hit because how could that not be a hit really? Um, but uh, the expo is such a great opportunity to taste the cuisines of the world, um, super exciting. And uh, to experience the culture um, of the UAE and, and the food. Uh, are you um, are you excited for for the world to descend upon uh, in Dubai? Absolutely. I, I I know that there are tons of chefs flying in for the expo, and that's personally my favorite part of it. I, I really want to see what they're going to come out here and do. Um, I'd love to meet all of them. I'd love to work with all of them. It's going to be really great. But also. Again, like you said, so many, so many great creations have come out of the expo. It's going to be really interesting to see at this point in time or in the world when we're so technologically advanced, what we're going to come up with next. Right, right. And, Wonderful. You know, um, so the expo actually starts uh, in October. It was supposed to start October 2020. <laughs> we had, you know, a little... Sure was. Right. Um, so now it's uh, starting October 2021 and it runs for six months. So you literally have six months and it's, it's going to be right about when everybody's itching and ready to start traveling um, right. and, and excited to get back out there. Um, and so you'll have a six month window from October to, I guess, April uh, to come mm -hmm. out and visit. And the USA will have a pavilion. We'll have awesome chefs like Chef Art coming out uh, to cook. Uh, and we will finally get to meet you, Chef Sahar, in person. Um, yep. The Virgin Atlanta. We'll be able to all cook together. Um, you know, we were just talking about how you know all these countries will come together. Um, why do you think? I, I, I'd love both of you to answer this uh, if you can. Um, why do you think food brings people together? What What do you think? Uh, why do you think it has the ability to teach us about different cultures? Who doesn't love to eat? I mean, I think that I think yeah, regardless I think. of, of Sahara, please, I think, you know, regardless of what authenticity it is, what it is, if it's good, it's good. You know, it goes beyond um, borders and it goes beyond color and gender. It, it, if it's good, it's good. And I think any, there's very few things that we can bring together, that we can use that does that for us. Absolutely. It's, it's the only thing collectively as a human race that we all agree on. Most definitely. Yes. Yeah. You know, Sarah, I have, I have, I have, a, I have a, I have a saying and that is, you know, there ain't no angry people, just hungry people. <laughs> do chef Sahar, do you have um, any, memorable meal when you were traveling ever that that sort of stands out in your mind that um, you were able to really you felt like you were really able to learn that culture um, while you were experiencing their cuisine uh yes actually it was it was 
my the the last trip I took, I took to Mumbai, and I was really blown away by the food scene over there. It's really coming up. Um, there's some amazing chefs um, doing great things with um, Indian food and Indian ingredients. Um, there are two guys, uh, Thomas and Zacharia. He's the chef and owner of Bombay Canteen. Um, mm-hmm. He was just, he does this thing where he travels around, the, uh, around India. Uh, he picks one region or one uh, city or one state or village, and he kind of delves really deep into how they cook, what ingredients they use, and brings that back to a seasonal menu at the restaurant. And India, India is amazing because, you know, you'll have 50 different kinds of biryanis that people are cooking in different states and everybody will do it with different spices and different, um, a different way of cooking it. So it, it's not just one biryani across the entire country. There's so many different ways of doing it. And then the second chef, um, that I met in India, his name was Pratik, and he is the chef and owner at Mas. And he was doing similarly the same thing as um, sort of like Noma, a very research-based uh, uh, concept or research-based uh, culinary experience with Kashmiri food. Were you able to incorporate any of that into your cooking and your baking when you came back? Uh, the ethos of it kind of resonated with me uh, because I do do that here. Uh, I love to inc- incorporate nostalgia. I love to incorporate ingredients um, into my food. And I felt that that was sort of what he was doing as well. So that's why it was, it was very, um, it was a great experience, honestly. Chef Art, do you have any trips that you've taken where the food, you really felt like you were able to learn the culture through the food? I mean, the most, you know, every trip you, I learned something, you know, our trip to Oman and all those amaz- amazing Ameza that we had and also the Wadi Rum and eating with the Bedouins and having the lamb and which was and all that it was delicious. Um, I also remember going to Azerbaijan and, and eating and not realizing that Cetra and all those different names for caviar were actually the names of the fish and actually having the fish from the Caspian Sea, which was truly and truly amazing. Um, you know, we also had, you know, delicious food in Eastern Europe, um, dumplings and things of that sort. You know, wherever you go, there was always something really uniquely delicious about it. Um, but I think one of my most amazing, we were up and way up in the Caucasus. And with a group of men, we sat, we made this lamb stew, um, very simple that they cooked over the fire, but we made a pastry, which is very typical. I'm sure they do also in the, the, the uh, Arab Emirates is they, and they do it in France, is they sealed the pot with the pastry so that it seals in the juices and everything, which was really, truly, really amazing. But it was, it was camaraderie, the people together making this dish. And that was in Azerbaijan, right? Yeah, Azerbaijan, yep. Um, So we're getting ready to wrap up, but I wanted to just ask a couple of final questions. Um, We Uh do have one last question um, that I wanted to ask you um, about uh, the pumpkins. Do do you grow pumpkin in in the UAE or do you have to bring that in? Um, It does grow in the UAE. I don't necessarily know of a specific farm, but I do know that it grows in the UAE. There's some in Anayan that grows um, sort of the outer regions of the major cities um, that are a little bit even more cooler climate. So Anayan will be one of those because um, they have a lot of oases. Oases or oases? (laughs) That's a good question. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So they're a little bit of a, on the outskirts of Abu Dhabi. And they'll have cooler climates that are ideal for growing vegetables and things like that. So they'll do that. Um, if if somebody wants to, uh, certainly we encourage everybody to make the dish, the, the pumpkin acida, but if somebody's really trying to um, experiment with Middle Eastern cuisine, do you have a suggestion of a dish um, that would be a good beginner dish to try to, to just start getting their feet wet? Um, I think uh, sweet or savory. How about, well, 
either one. Yeah. Um, I think maybe a Mechbus would be a good place to start. And a Mechbus is almost like a, it's a rice dish. So what you do is you start by cooking a, a sort of a tomato stew with uh, chicken and, and spices or the spices. Um, so you can come up, you can find maybe a mix of spices that you like. Um, and then you add your rice into the stew and then the rice cooks with the flavor of the stew. Um, so it, it's kind of an easy dish to start with because it doesn't. Sounds amazing. It sounds almost like a biryani or a, you know, uh, we make like a, a, a jambalaya or chicken and rice ourselves. It sounds delicious. Yeah. Uh, chef, um, I know everybody's going to now ask for that recipe. So um, if you could just post that maybe on Instagram or something uh, this week so people can can get, um, and, or, or you can send it to me and we can put it on our website um, so people can um, check that out. Um, uh, chef Art, um, I'd, I'd like to ask both of you. Um, so Chef Art, do you have any advice uh, for young people starting in this industry as a young chef? Well, I, I still believe that the, the, the you know the, to me like the sacred message is if it's something you love they will love um i think it's important that um not to try to define yourself by another person but to define yourself by yourself um but borrow um and, and support uh you can get you know like like the chef how she went to paris and she and she got a wonderful training i think but I, I, I promise you <clears throat> that in Dubai, she is also taken a spin, put a spin on what she was taught. Um, you know, it's, I remember t studying piano and it's to, all it started was that you learned the classics and you put your own spin to it. You know, Oprah Winfrey always told me that just because it's been done doesn't mean it's not a good idea. The fact is you know that it works. You put your spin on it. Um, you know, the, the reality is there's no better career to be in because the reality is as long as humanity exists on this planet, they're going to have to eat. So in the route, I do believe that the that food that is easy to eat, handheld food, food, you know, this whole, um, you know, with with the with the pandemic, having people eat outside and, and to go food and things of that sort and delivery food, that's not going to go away. I think that, you know, fine dining will not be as common as it once was, but you'll see more and more food that will be takeaway or eaten in the hand on the street. Yeah, and, and Chef Sahar, you are the first female pastry chef uh, in, in the UAE. So what advice would you have for young women uh, who are just beginning in the industry? Um, don't give up. It, it, it gets really difficult. It really does. It's not an easy industry to be in but it's really rewarding. Um, once you get past the, the initial difficult part of it and you don't give up, it's really rewarding. And, and don't take shortcuts because there's, there's a journey and you have to go through the entire journey uh, to make sure that you, know, you grow as you're becoming the chef that you're turning into. And like Art said, um, while you're learning, take a little bit from here and there and here and there and you kind of put what you love together and that becomes your identity or your personality. Um, so that's why the journey is really important. Don't try to skip to the top and, and become a head chef <laughs> in like no. two minutes. Right. Yeah. It's great advice. Um, thank you both. Um, to our thank viewers. Thank you, Lauren. Um, you know, thank you so much for joining us today. As I said, um, you can go to uh, the UAE Embassy US YouTube channel. We'll have this video there if you want to cook along. Um, I, I really hope that everyone uh, tries a new dish uh, this Thanksgiving. You know, we need to have fun. We need to keep our spirits up. We need to continue connecting with each other. Um, you need to keep reaching out to your friends, check in on your neighbors. Let's make sure everybody's doing okay. Um, let's, let's inject some culture um, into our meals, learn a little bit about different places in the world. If you cook any of these dishes, uh, we would love to see the pictures. Um, we are, you can find um, us on Instagram um, at Culinary Diplomacy Project. 
Um, so if you cook any of these dishes, tag us, or even if you have a traditional dish from your region or from your culture that you make, we'd love to see that. Uh, take a picture and tag us, tag the chefs as well. Um, at Chef Art Smith, is it at the Chef Art Smith? At the Chef Art Smith. And Sahar, what is your Instagram? Sahar YP. Sahar YP. Um, and of course, um, at UAE uh, Embassy, uh, sorry, UAE Embassy US, also you can tag. Um, thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you to the chefs. Uh, so much for teaching us these great recipes and to the embassy for hosting us. And please, everyone, have a safe, safe, and healthy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Sahar. Thank you. Happy, happy holidays. Bye.